calificas para ser legal? ¿Quieres saber? Solo llama al abogado Andrés Mejer. Good morning and welcome to the English segment of our radio program Para Ser Legal to Be Legal. My name is Andres Mejer and I am a speaker, published author, uh, and immigration attorney. Today we're starting a little earlier than normal because I have to I have to get on a train and go to Washington DC for an appearance at CBS Good Day Washington tomorrow morning. Um, today we're gonna try to talk about four things. The first is International Peace Committee, sorry, Rescue Committee. So there's there's a woman I ran into on an airplane uh, coming back from Arizona to Newark after our my Arizona TV appearance on ABC. Um, so we'll talk about Alexandra and her situation. Second thing we're going to talk about is April's immigration by the numbers. Uh, who came? Where they come from? What what what's their mix up and what's what's going on? Three, we're going to talk about what Trump has tried to do to limit asylum, or actually get rid of it. He'd like to, but, you know, well, how has he gone about doing that? And the fourth, about a new ICE program um, to help police help ICE deport people. So, four things. First, welcome to the show. Anybody who has a question can always post it on Facebook or if they, you want a consultation, something a little more private, more confidential, you can always call 888-888-0307. That's 888-888-0307. First, so, first, seg, first part. Um, so last week, I you will be seeing the videos soon, the clips from our appearance in... NBC on Wednesday in California, ABC was Arizona, and tomorrow is CBS in Washington, D.C. There are several other appearances I will have in the future, but those are the ones I have for now, because to be honest, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of energy, uh, and it's very difficult to travel all across the country and still practice law and still trying to help people. Um, I could do one or I could do the other. It's hard to do both at the same time. So, as I was coming back, I was boarding a plane on Thursday. Uh, I sit down, a woman, woman sits down next to me with her cute two-year-old child, Alexandra and, G and Genesis. Um, and there's another woman who comes up to her wearing a black shirt, black shorts. It says rescue on it. Um, and she's miming certain things. It's, it was clear to me that the, the woman who was trying to help Alexandra did not speak Spanish. So... I just came up and said, you know, being who I am, how can I help? Listen, I can, I can translate for you what's going on. Uh, and she was so thankful. Uh, so she was a member of the International Rescue Committee. Ironically, she was from New Jersey and she was volunteering in Arizona. International Rescue Committee in this context is helping people at the border, is helping them go from detained once they're released well where are they going to go how do they get where they need to go so unbeknownst to me alexandra had entered the country uh was caught at the border i believe she presented herself at the border uh, to file for asylum for her and for her daughter and she was detained for a total of about four days after which she was released you know one of the questions that she asked me is because I, I i told her let me look at it we had two hours before the plane ride. I, I had a lot of time. Uh, and I might as well try to help somebody while I was doing it. Um, so I reviewed all, all of her immigration paperwork, what documentation that they had. Um, she was given an order of supervision, even though she was not deported yet. She, she, was, she has to present herself to ICE and she will be, she's placed in removal proceedings. She's going to ha she's gonna have her day of court. So May 15th, she needs to present herself to an ICE officer. I mean, she was given like four days, plus or minus, from the time that she, released, she, le she was released to when she had to present herself and got a, got a, a plane ride. Um, she had a cousin here in New Jersey, who she hadn't seen in a very long time. Um, I spoke to him, made sure I, I helped her get off the plane. I helped her, you know, get her, get her stuff together and to get on... Uh, 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 
and to meet her cousin. Uh, she didn't have a cell phone. She didn't have she didn't have anything on her. So this committee helps people go get from immigrants, particularly from point A to point B, because they don't speak the language and they don't know what's going on. Um, so I, I, Alexandra was detained for four days. She came with her two-year-old daughter, uh, fleeing persecution in Guatemala. Um, like I said, now she has to appear for uh, at a nice interview. And as I explained to her, initially it will be quite frequent. At some point, it will diminish. You know, maybe weekly, maybe monthly, maybe every couple of months. Um, you know, right now she's not even she was not even issued a notice to appear. So that will likely happen on May fifteenth. Um, and we'll be talking to her later today to help her prepare for that appearance. So that, see, you never know who you're going to run into at the airport. Here I was minding my own business, getting ready to, you know, to come back to, to New Jersey and back to, you know, everyday life after, after the TV appearances. And just asking, you never know who you're going to run into. So that was Alexandra. Now, I don't have the details of her asylum claim. I need to meet with her in, in, in more detail and in private. Here, we were surrounded by people who were in an airport. I didn't want to go into too many details uh, because it was not confidential. So, second thing, immigration by the numbers. What did April look like? If you recall, in March, we talked about it. Uh, it was a relatively new phenomenon. It was 102, almost 103,000 immigrants. Um, over 50,000 of them were detained, um, were family units. The majority of them had, had presented themselves legally and requested asylum. However, some of them were, you know, detained, apprehended, not, you know, trying to enter illegally. Um, so April was very similar, but even higher. So in April, there was 109,000 immigrants apprehended at the, at the border. That is, those are the highest numbers that we've had in 12 years. When we've had much higher numbers th than that. But in recent times, this is the highest. Uh, of those 109, 58,474 were family units. 31,606 were individuals. And that, again, is the biggest change. It's not the number of immigrants that, 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 that are coming in because we've had much higher than this. Um, it's who are they? Are, you know, individuals versus family units. And where are they coming from? Uh, so Guatemalans, like, like Alexandra, is the highest number of immigrants coming into the United States, followed by Honduras and El Salvador. This is out of the southern border. Um, in the last 19 months, almost 2% of Guatemala's population has found themselves to the U.S. Those numbers are staggering, if you think about it. Um, for Honduras, almost 2.4% of the population. So let me give you an idea. Guatemala, as of these, these numbers are of 2017, so they're not accurate anymore, particularly with all this, with what's going on in, in Central America. But in 2017, there were 16.9 million Guatemalans in the country. Uh, Honduras was 9.2 million, and El Salvador was 6.3 million. Now, today, in the United States, there's 815,000 Guatemalans. Again, 2017, forgive me. Um, in, in 2018 fiscal year, and that goes from, you know, end of September to beginning of October, there were 301,900 Guatemalans apprehended. H from Honduras, there's 623,000 in the U.S. And in, again, in fiscal year 2018, 224,078 apprehended. El Salvador, there was 1.4 million people already here and 79,000 apprehended in fiscal year 2019. Now, for El Salvador, think about it. 6.3 million total in El Salvador in 2017 and almost 1.5 million in the U.S. now. That's almost 25% of their population. I mean, so the U.S., to give it an idea, has over, we have over 300 million people living in the U.S. Imagine if 25% of them left in a short period of time. So we're talking about, what, over 75 million? Again, as a percentage. 
If 75 million Americans went somewhere else, this country would be in, we'd be in bad shape. Businesses would, would go under, um, towns would be gone because, you know, schools would be empty, hospitals would be empty. I mean, 25% is a big percentage of your population. Uh, you know, and this whole narrative that Trump has that they're all criminals, that they're just coming here to take advantage of people. Look, I, sure, the, I, I'm sure there are some who who do that, who believe that, but the reality is they're fleeing horrible conditions. And no matter how difficult you, you make it here, or you make it seem to be here, it's still better than where they're at, where there's practically a civil war. That's, unfortunately, that's a fact. That's just the way things are right now um, in El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala, to a lesser extent, Nicaragua. Um, so what has Trump done to limit immigration in the U.S.? So look, there were four segments. First, we talked about Alexandra, the Guatemalan woman I met on the airplane coming from Arizona to, to New Jersey. Second, we talked about uh, immigration by the numbers. What was the numbers in April? What's the breakdown? And third, now, how has Trump tried to limit immigration, legal immigration to the United States. And predominantly we're talking about his efforts to reduce or eliminate asylum. That, that's really been his issue. So first, he wants to build that wall. He shut down the government for over a month. He declared a national emergency to get his wall built. But the wall isn't going to stop, does not address the problem. Look, I don't, I don't have a problem with a wall. I'm an Israeli citizen. Um, so I, I know the difference that the wall made between Israel and, and the Palestinian territories. Frankly, there's a reason why you don't hear uh, about terrorist attacks every other day like you did a decade ago. And it's in its large part do, doing thanks to the wall. Now, the wall between you know, Mexico and the U.S. is a little harder because there's water <laughs> in parts of the border. You know, it makes it a little difficult. Um, but control of your borders is, is, is an important thing. For security, and I'm all for it, I, I don't have a problem with it. I just think that if you have a problem like what we have now, and all you're talking about is the wall, the wall is not going to solve it. These people are entering, for the most part, legally and saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to go back to my country. I'm requesting asylum. A wall isn't going to stop that. That's just common sense. Um, so... Trump has tried to restrict the number of people who can request asylum per day, which is why there are thousands, if not more, in Mexico waiting days and days trying to, en try trying to enter legally and make their legal claim for asylum. Trump has tried to reduce those who qualify for asylum. You know, he's trying to say that, listen, only government, you can only, uh, asylum is only valid for governmental actors not for criminal organizations that the government can't control or in private actors because they consider even a criminal car cartel a private actor um, i would argue that in some parts of the country uh, certain countries the cartels are the government i mean they say they collect taxes now there you know in the u.s you might get jailed you might lose your property um, well in some of these countries you lose your life if you don't pay the taxes that the cartels are charging um, so he's tried to say that domestic violence is not a sufficient basis for, um, for asylum. So he's trying to reduce those that can qualify. Um, he's trying to reduce the number that apply per day. And he wants them to wait in Mexico while their case is pending. Why? Well, there's, there really aren't that many attorneys in, in Mexico. It's a real, it's a real challenge. You know, I'm talking about immigration attorneys that are familiar with U.S. immigration law. Look, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we, we had this conversation in the past where 48% of detained people that had an attorney won their case. Only 4% of detained people that didn't have an attorney uh, um, won their case. So you're 12 times more likely to succeed in not just an asylum claim, in almost any claim, but asylum is particularly difficult. So by forcing people to apply only in Mexico, they don't get the benefit of, of speaking to an immigration attorney. They don't get the benefit of having to learn how to present their case. And chances are they're going to be denied and going to be, depo and going to be deported. And that is what the Trump administration wants. Um, 
now they're trying also to say that asylum seekers must be detained and that asylum seekers you know should have to pay to file for asylum a filing fee and that they should not get work authorization so look whether whether they paid for it to, to file for asylum or not I probably think that they shouldn't but I don't have a problem with them paying as long as it's you know, nominal fee, not a not a significant fee, uh, but not giving employment authorization that that's just silly. It hurts our economy. Um, they're going to be here anyway. All you're doing is perpetuating, you know, I- employers hiring people illegally rather than legally, and getting the tax dollars for it. So if they have employment authorization, they have a social security number. They're going to get paid legally. The income tax is going to be deducted at, at, out of their paycheck and they're more likely to file for taxes at the end of the year. You don't give them a social, you don't give them work authorization, guess what? They're still going to have to work somehow. They still have to support themselves while, while they're fighting their case. They're gonna, they, they need money to hire an attorney. They need money to, to live. Um, so they're going to be working. And you're just not getting any benefit out of that, you as the government, any direct benefit. And that's just silly. There's, there's no real reason for that. Um, it's poor policy. I, I don't see any benefit. And you're not deterring anybody. By saying you're not going to get employment authorization doesn't mean that people aren't going to come. They're going to come anyway. Um, because where they are is so much worse. And the fourth segment, the fourth thing we're talking about today is uh, ICE's new program, the Warrant Service Officer Program. It allows local police to arrest and detain immigrants for 48 hours on behalf of ICE. Now, they're saying that local police stations can do that even if a municipality or a county or a state um, created an ordinance or a law prohibiting it. Like New Jersey, the Attorney General's office um, made a significant change and said they're no longer going to going to co-op, cooperate with with ICE. This is a way to try to get around it. Now it's going to be challenged. We'll see what's going to happen. Who get you know who trumps who? Is this federal? Is this state? Uh, you know, it's not a law, it's not an executive order, so we will see how that plays out. But the clear intent is to counter sanctuary cities. Uh, I use those terms loosely because there's no real clear definition of what a sanctuary city is, and each and some of them are just saying that we want to we want to prioritize our resources, but we don't have a you know. So it it really depends city by city, state by state. Um, so, my name is Andres Mechel. Today we spoke about four things. One, Alexandra, the Guatemalan woman that I met coming back from Arizona after being on TV in Arizona and California. Um, second, we talked about I- April's immigration by the numbers, the number of Guatemalans, Hondureños, and, and, and Salvadoranians who, who have ent- entered the United States in April. We spoke about how Trump has tried to limit immigration. And fourth, we're talking about ICE's new program uh, about how to counter sanctuary cities. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, 888-888-0307. Until next time, I'm Andres Mejer. Thank you. Calificas para ser legal, quieres saber, solo llama al abogado Andres Mejer. 1-800-333-3676. 